to order May 18, 2017, regular meeting. Um, Mr. Hopkins, if we can have the roll call. Dominic. Present. Johnson. Present. Jackson. Lynn. Present. Hawthorne. Present. Gage Watts. Here. Middleton. Here. Atkins. Here. Chavez. Smith. Louis Johnson. Here. I ask uh, Commissioner Strongly Gage Watts to lead us in the invocation. And Commissioner Atkins, if you can lead us in the pledge, please all stand. <laughs> Placing the flag and reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, um, I don't know, whatever you say about Commissioner Stormy Gage, what she's definitely a, a prayer rule. Thank you for that. That's why I call him a prayer rule. Yeah, great, great guy. Uh, um, we'll go on to our next item at this time, Mr. Clark. And that would be agenda additions. I'm going to have to run out. Where's our park at? Uh, I have no agenda additions, so we're going to move on over to our next item which is citizens' comments. Citizens who wish to address the commission on any issue other than zoning, please fill out a comment card located in the chamber for you and return it to myself or the clerk of the commission. Individual comments are limited to three <coughs> minutes. So we'll start our public comment. Please remember, I don't know what all the ding is going on, but let's keep that to a minute. Uh, Mr. Arnold, my first um, yes. person is Benjamin Arnold. Benjamin, where are you, man? You're hiding. Is he here? Uh, yeah, I know. He was. He was. Kim, we'll go ahead and go with you. Kim, you're here. Kim, Kraft. I think it's the computer. Hey. Ken Kraft, 157 Archer Avenue, Shreveport, 71105. Since you mentioned Haydn, why couldn't Beethoven, I mean Mozart, find his, his tutor? Because he was Haydn. That's a composer joke. Franz Joseph Haydn. Anyway, I dropped off with Dr. Wilson some little Willis Knighton Tobacco Institute cards. I had the uh, misinformation given to me last night by a lady who really wants to quit. She's been smoking 29 years. I cannot afford the Shantix. It's free. Go to this program and call this woman. Courtney Rayburn, 212-2842. Uh, please hand those out to any of your employees who might want to try to kick the habit. You know, there's seven dirty words, not George Carlin, but there's seven dirty words with smoking, and there's two sets of them. One is when former Surgeon General Coop said, single most important preventable cause of death. And then the other seven are the big lies by the five tobacco guys. Under oath, I do not believe nicotine is addictive. Well, anyway, let's, let, and I found out, thank you from Trudy Welch, your premiums are the same for everybody, smokers and non-smokers. So if y'all have a health committee of this group or however y'all do that, uh, look into maybe another incentive for the smokers to quit. Maybe the state's planning to gig them for $50 a month starting in January. It's, it's a real reward, but the key is their health. And the other thing I want to talk about briefly is citizens' committees. Uh, the one on the monument was appointed, and, you know, we had the big Ruhaha on Warren Morris Day on June 9th last summer. Uh, 
on the 20th anniversary of the home run to, to beat the Hurricanes. And so, but I was curious, at any point leading up between the resolution and the April 29th election, I missed it, I guess, but I saw nothing about a citizens committee leading up to that tax. Did I totally miss it on the website and the news media? Because it seems like it might have been prudent had y'all appointed a citizens committee leading up to that, like you did for the monument. Because in my research for 35 years, citizens committee tax elections have succeeded every time. School board, city, none has failed. Two mayors who went without a citizens committee lost 14 of 22 total propositions, Hannah and uh, Bo Williams total. I'm not going to go into the details, but they're all right here, every one. And finally, one exception, once the citizens voted for a new tax without a citizens committee. Hey, that's the Hightower Hilton, so there's always an exception. But when y'all go back and revisit this, each of you appoint a citizen. And Dr. Wilson, the 13th, make it a baker's dozen and break the tie in case, in case it's a 6-6 six, six tie. But I really think the next time we, we go to the public, in advance, we need you guys to appoint one of us. And Matthew, I'd love to serve if you're interested. But anyway, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kraft. As always, appreciate your comments. And um, let's see. I have R.J. Johnson. Is R.J. Johnson here? Yes, sir. There he is. Okay. Mr. Johnson, yes, how are you doing today? I am great. Good evening, commissioners. I um, just wanted to come give you a quick update on the work of the Citizens Advisory Committee on the Monument. Um, we have had two public hearings so far. Uh, we've had a great attendance at those at the Southern Hills meeting. We had 73 in attendance um, with 27 speakers. At Morningstar um, on Tuesday, we had 81 in attendance with 32 speakers. Just wanted to remind you that tonight we will be at Donnie Bickham Middle School starting at 6. So if you get out of this meeting, we invite you all to join us. Thank you to the commissioners who have come out um, to those meetings with your busy schedule to hear what they have to say. I um, want to remind everybody as well, for those not able to come to the actual public hearings, we do have two options for you. One of those is email. Um, you can email us at CADO, L-R-P-C-A-C, at gmail.com. Or you can mail in your comments to P.O. Box 52104, Shreveport, Louisiana, 71135. We have received a number of comments, um, and we're trying to keep track of that so we can make sure that we tell you what your district um, <coughs> citizens, what your constituents are saying um, about the monument, and we're taking all of that um, into consideration. On your next um, agenda, on the next June agenda, we have recommended Bishop, well, I have recommended Bishop Andrew Randall um, to assume the vacancy that was created by the resignation of uh, Bishop Larry Brandon. Um, so I'm asking you um, next month to ratify um, that recommendation. But again, we are excited about um, everything that we're hearing. We're excited about people coming out and just being involved um, and being civil um, while we're having these conversations and being res respectful of others and their opinions. So we appreciate that. If you do have anything that you need from me, um, please let me know, and we'll be happy to address those concerns. Thank you so much. Can you, can you, want, um, can you give us that email again? Sure. It's CADO, L-R-P-C-A-C, at gmail.com. And the number? The P.O. Box, mm -hmm. 52104, Shreveport, Louisiana, 71135. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank, Thank you. you for your service. You're doing a great yeah. job. Miss <coughs> uh, Alberta Matthew. Alberta Matthew. Oh. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm Alberta Matthews. My husband and I have lived at our location on Velwood Drive for over 40 years. Uh, Matthews, we raised can you give your name? Can you give us your name? Alberta your address Matthews, 3325 Velwood Drive, Shreveport, Louisiana, 71109. As I said, we've been lived there for <coughs> over 40 years. And uh, we raised our children there. Our families have been there. But 
We've had a problem with dangerous dogs, pit bulls, coming across our yards, just stray dogs in the neighborhood. Uh, directly across from me is one of Caddo's of uh, Shreveport's public schools. The hole in the fence is where the, some of the dogs, I, I watched them run into this hole on the school property. This is where children play every day. What could possibly happen? Once when I was attacked or charged by a pit bull, and I called the police and I called animal control. Mm. I did not hear from animal control. When I finally did call my council person, the next day is when I did hear from them. The police had to, when they did come, pepper spray the dog. Mm. If my husband or my nieces and nephews have been attacked, is this something that has to happen before something is done? Mm -hmm. In our neighborhood, in the city of Shreveport. Mm. This is a major concern. I'm a taxpayer, and I shouldn't have to worry about things like that. The last time, which was about three days ago, I called animal control because I was charged and launched at by a pit bull in my yard. Mm. I called animal control. No response. Mm. I called my council person. It was the next day when I finally did hear from animal control. Finally, heard something from animal control, and nothing was done. Mm. I'm afraid to go outside to my own storage house in the back. Yes, I don't go out there anymore. I'm afraid. And this should not be. I am a taxpayer. I've worked all my life, my husband and I, to pay for our home so that we could enjoy living there, working in our, in, in our yard, entertaining our family without having to be harassed by stray pit bulls and vicious dogs. As a result of these things happening, I don't know if recommendations can be made toward the, the ordinances, the laws, the policies that we have here in the city of Shreveport. I, I don't know. But I do know when I called one day, and I had to look up the number on the internet for animal control. And I think if you get on your internet and look it up, you will see that there's a rating of five stars. And their rating is two stars. This is inconceivable. Why? And why is this allowed to be? Why has this not been addressed? I'm sorry. Again, I emphasize that should homeowners and senior citizens like me be confined inside our homes and not be able to enjoy our property that we worked hard to own, we worked hard and we paid taxes on because the laws, the policies, and the ordinances are not followed or they're just not on the books. But I feel like this is something, this is an issue that needs to be addressed because I'm tired of being afraid in my own home. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Wilson, if y'all will. And if you want to stick around, man, we'll more than likely get to it. I don't we got it. Uh, that concludes our citizens' comments. I have a card for Benjamin Arnold. Is he here? Is there Benjamin Arnold here? He was. Okay. He was here earlier. I called out his name and I just held it. He's gone. Okay. Yes, he left. All right. I'm All right. right. That concludes citizens' comments. I think Todd is checking on uh, an issue with our TV feed, our cable feed. And so, Michelle, are we in your hand? Next, we move to visitors. Mr. Mark uh, Wade, Chairman of the Cattle Parish Industrial Board. Good evening. Good afternoon. 
I think you asked for me to come here. So, <laughs> so yes, I, I am happy to be here. Uh, I am happy to be uh, the president of the Industrial Development Board. Uh, that, by the way, is a volunteer position. There is no uh, compensation attached. We have a, uh, we have a very interested board, uh, a board that is uh, very interested in helping to bring jobs to Caddo Parish. And uh, that is the purpose for which we exist, is to help the parish to bring jobs here. And uh, we do everything we can to make that happen. It isn't easy. It, most of the time it takes a long time. There's a long incubation period on almost all of the projects that are involved. But the Industrial Development Board is authorized by the state legislature and by the state to, to, uh, to help in certain ways to bring uh, manufacturers and other businesses to this area. And we can, in fact, uh, help them uh, with incentives. And, uh, and we do so whenever we can. Uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions, and I'm sure you have some. I'll, I'll go ahead and take this real quick. I don't know if uh, Jackson wants to All right. Um, Commissioner Johnson, do you have anything? It was previous. Okay. I, I uh, requested to Mr. Johnson to so I'm good. Thank you. Commissioner Schneider? Thank you. Uh, I, obviously, I was the one invited, uh, Mr. Way, but it wasn't just for myself, I know a lot of people had a lot of questions. Uh, and first off, welcome. I know you guys are voluntary. Um, I don't want you to think you're coming into the lines then and you're about to get berated with, with questions. But I know there are a lot of concerned citizens and obviously with the news media and what's going on. I think there's so much uh, misinformation going out. Amen. Uh, a, a, a lot of it that uh, it would be better if instead of uh, the, the yelling and the back and forth with the media that we come together uh, and we start breaking down the barriers and, and bringing out the communication. Uh, so I'm, I'm grateful that you're here. Um, I can start off some of the questions that I've that I sure. received. Uh, a lot of people are wondering, and, and you've gone over this, but just you know, who is the IDB? Why are they there? Uh, what have they been doing? Uh, why are they not putting pressure on Elio? Are they allowing people to buy stuff out of there? Uh, and I'm just going to go through the list of a couple of things and you kind of touch on them. People are calling saying that uh, that we're that we purchased a lot of the equipment inside, which obviously is not true. But they're saying that how are you letting them sell the stuff from outside the parish, and uh, why you guys keep investing in the Elio Motors, which obviously we're not. Uh, so I, I think you can really touch on a lot of the things that that's been being said in the media, and then I'll let my other fellow commissioners ask some okay. questions that, that they've received as well. Thank okay. you for coming. I, I guess uh, I guess the. Uh, I guess the bottom line that I would like to convey is that there is a huge amount of misinformation and misunderstanding about Elio Motors and its relationship with the General Motors plant. Uh, when General Motors went bankrupt, the General Motors plant was turned over to the Racer Trust which is an organization that was, is designed to rehabilitate plants like this around the country, and there were quite a few of them, to rehabilitate those plants and convert them into some active industrial development purpose. That was the purpose of the Racer Trust. The Racer Trust brought Elio, who was a an engineer from Arizona who was trying to start a company to build a three-wheel vehicle. And Stuart Lichter, who was uh, one of the, uh, probably the second largest uh, real estate developer in the United States, maybe the largest in some ways, uh, who had experience in converting such facilities into successful industrial parks. They brought those two elements together with Caddo Parish to keep the General Motors plant, which, would, which had been built at a cost of over $900 million, to keep it from being leveled, to keep it from being destroyed, so that there would be nothing there but land. Certainly, that was a worthy objective. I mean, why? 
destroy a property that costs $900 million to build if it can be converted into an industrial park of some kind or some <coughs> positive industrial use. The, the way that the Industrial Development Board got involved in that is that the, the sale of that property, which by the way was for seven and a half million dollars, the sale was made to the Industrial Development Board, which is, if you want to call it, a, a subsidiary of Caddo Parish, because it can do things by legislation, it can do things according to statute, that you probably wouldn't want to do as a public body. It can get involved in incentive programs, it can get involved in, in real estate, it can do sales and transfers, and it can make incentives and so forth. Uh, some of some of the things you wouldn't want to do as a public body uh, and it gives some insulation to Caddo Parish but in every instance and in every activity the Industrial Development Board acts on behalf of Caddo Parish it acts on behalf of the citizens of Caddo to protect their money to bring jobs to our area and in this case to keep that plant from being destroyed and to work with anybody that's willing to convert it into a positive industrial use. And so that's how we got into the program. Uh, technically, we own the property. We own it on behalf of Caddo Parish. It is leased, and that was a part of the whole arrangement that was made at the time that it was sold to the Industrial Development Board. It was leased to Industrial Realty Group, Stuart Lichter who also operates a Shreveport Business Park. That's one of his subsidiaries. So he has the master contract to develop that property into a positive use. And he has been doing that for ever since December of 2013. So it's about three and a half years, close to three and a half years now. Uh, he has seen quite a few prospects, most of which did not turn out to be good prospects. Uh, they went somewhere else. They didn't like something about the property or there was something about it that didn't fit their needs. Uh, Elio, Elio is one of the, one of the, one of the prospects. Okay, Elio is one of the prospects. Elio came together from the very beginning and, and was going to occupy 40% of the plant. And by the way, that's uh, over 3 million square feet. 40% would be a little over a million. Uh, and Elio was going to operate uh, their, their facility uh, eventually after they were able to raise the capital. Uh, that hasn't happened, and they have had several announcements where they delayed the opening uh, most recently just a few months ago um, so it's, it's been put off because they have had difficulty raising the capital uh, to, uh, with which to operate that has not however presented prevented IRG from continuing to promote the plant and find other tenants um, I, and I will tell you that at one point uh, the Louisiana Economic Development brought a prospect to IRG that would have taken the whole plant. And at that time, Elio, an agreement was made with Elio that they would move to another location in Caddo Parish and out of the GM plant so that that other prospect could take the whole plant. Um, and they were amenable to that, and that, that agreement was set in place for a six-month period, and ultimately the prospect decided to go somewhere else. Actually, they decided to stay where they were and expand in their present location. So that didn't, that didn't pan out. But I say that to, let, to illustrate that the fact that Elio has not been able to get started has not prevented the plant from being marketed in its entirety as well as in pieces. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of misunderstanding. People think uh, people think that the uh, people think that the equipment inside the plant uh, that 
I, I heard one, I'm, I'm so sorry to say this, but I saw a news announcer say that Elio was selling the equipment to try to stay afloat and they were taking, they were taking equipment out of the plant and uh, it, it was like an accusation. Well, th they bought the equipment. It's their equipment. Uh, they sold a lot of it because it wasn't useful for their purposes, but that was part of the transaction the Racer Trust made. It was their equipment. They paid for it. And uh, if they want to sell it, they can sell it. There's not much left. Uh, the plant's pretty empty now. I think it's important that you, that you know as well that uh, uh, IRG uh, maintains that plant. They keep it air conditioned and lighted and heated when it's necessary and they pay the utilities and they pay all of the operating expenses of keeping it functional. Uh, something over 200000 a month, which if they were not doing that, Caddo Parish would have to. Uh, if, this, if this arrangement had not been made, Caddo Parish would be spending a couple of million dollars or more uh, a year of taxpayers' money to maintain that plant. We are delighted that IRG is doing that in your stead. They are also paying $60,500 a month rent for the property. It's about three quarters of a million dollars a year that, we, that they pay to Caddo Parish for rent for that property. I don't think most people know that. Um, they have a 20 year lease and uh, they can buy the property. They can buy the property at any time they want to for seven and a half million plus eight percent interest on the money from the very beginning compounded, compounded. and I don't know if you're getting eight percent now but I don't think so I'm not <laughs> uh, but that's the deal if they if they actually want to buy this property they can do so now it was set up so that they wouldn't be incentivized to get the property and then immediately sell it for a big windfall profit and the way that was set up was that in the first five years of the lease if they sell it any proceeds above the seven and a half plus eight percent compound interest goes to Caddo Parish it comes back to Caddo Parish now after five years if they sell it the profit is theirs but they have to pay Caddo Parish seven and a half million plus eight percent compound interest so there's no way that Caddo Parish can lose any money and there's no way that this wasn't a heck of a deal for Caddo Parish to buy a $900 million plant for $7.5 million. Uh, it's just, it's, it's incredible. Um, I, I think that pretty much uh, is the way that it's, it's, it's in place right now. And I know there's a great deal of misunderstanding, but if, if any of y'all would like to ask any questions, I'd be happy to. Try to try to answer them or or refer them to the appropriate party. All right, well, we got a couple. I, I want to uh, jump in here. Huh? Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, Gar, I appreciate that. Um, the, and the only one more thing I, I just want to uh, elaborate on, even if the uh, intent of Stuart Lickner was in, in six years to buy the property and uh, and then sell it off and, and make a big windfall. Let's be honest, it's still going to create jobs because what else is going to go in there besides? Yeah. I, I highly doubt he's just going to level it out and, and uh, build houses or whatnot. So right. we will probably end up getting our jobs anyway, uh, but it just, we're just having to wait for them. You know, something you might be interested to know, and we, we looked into this because of all the criticism. Uh, Stuart Lichter's been doing this for a long time. Yeah. Um, he's a billionaire. And he got his money by doing this. Right. Um, he has an Air Force base, McClelland Air Force Base, out in California that he's had for 17 years. There are thousands of jobs and dozens of companies <coughs> out there now um, in, a, in a situation just like ours. It was a closed Air Force base, and they turned it into an industrial park. Uh, thousands of jobs, more than there were when it was an active Air Force base. He, uh, back in 2008, when the automobile industry tanked, 
and you recall what happened and you, you remember all the all the problems and that's when GM had their problems and other companies too he bought a number of properties in Michigan and those properties now almost 10 years later have thousands of jobs and hundreds of companies dozens of companies that are actively employed and more people in the places than there were before uh, the same is true in um, Ohio he has a number of, of facilities in Ohio of the same nature he said to us himself Shreveport has been much slower than expected I have to say, a uh, personal opinion, some of that is because of all the misunderstanding and all of the bad media coverage that we've had in this area, which discourages people who might have a, you know, might be a prospect for coming here. I mean, who wants to walk into a hornet's nest? So, uh, I, I'm just delighted that you all asked me to come here and we get some of the facts out dispel some of the mistakes and mis mis misconceptions and, and misinformation that's out there. Let's get it right and why don't we pull together as a community and support this effort okay. and see if we can't turn this plant into thousands of jobs like it used to be. Guard, thank you for coming. I appreciate you finally get to talk to you again. Thank you. Uh, I know you got thick skin hanging in there. Oh yeah. Uh, don't give up. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, Guard. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Vice President Dalvin. Yeah, um, Guard, I just wanted to say a couple of things. First thing I wrote down when you came up here was volunteer. Yes, sir. And uh, I appreciate your volunteer. I appreciate each and every one of your members that are volunteering your time and effort to be on the board. And if I remember correctly, you were actually on the police jury for a number of years. I was. So yes. Appreciate your um, past work. Um, I think you probably need to come each and every month and give the same exact speech. You're saying exactly what the topics that. I know that Commissioner Johnson, Commissioner Smith, Commissioner Lynn, who were here when all this came yeah. down, and all of the 12 commissioners that know. Unfortunately, we have a bad uh, perception and the things that have been said in the media uh, or social media and those type of things have kind of run rampant and given a bad light to everything. I'm not going to continue to hamp on everything, but because you hit on it, and I think, you know, it's kind of keep it uh, simple if we can, but uh, we've got over $1.3 million in rent. Um, yeah. Globus is out there. They've created over 200 jobs. They're going to continue to grow. That's right. Uh, I've said over and over and again that movable equipment that had been moved was not ours. It belonged to Racer Trust who sold it to EDO. It was theirs. We can't stop them. And you really, really what I like is hit on some of those issues because people have said, well, your contract should have been better. It could have been better. But I do like the fact that there were some provisions in there that basically said that IRG just could turn around and sell this thing right. and make a big windfall. So we did have some, um, you know, some good things in the contract. And, you know, when we met with Stuart Ligner, I really, really think that he's going to try to do the best job he can. To, to, I mean, he has an incentive to create jobs. And sure. I've been doing economic development and working with it. It just does not happen overnight. No. It just does not happen overnight. I'm sitting over there in a thousand acre park in um, just south of Vivian and um you know things take a while to develop so, they do um i think we just need to keep talking about the positive things that um, mr lickner they've been making the rental payments and um, you guys are continuing to work hard i appreciate you coming here and thank you so much thank you all right commissioner Act. thank you guard uh, for that very nice and comprehensive summary of the situation we appreciate it uh, as i see it uh, the commission at the time of this transaction was looking to, re to to meet three goals. One, they wanted to preserve the plant. Two, they wanted to be in a position to recruit employers. And three, they wanted to protect the assets of the taxpayer that were being invested in the facility. That's and exactly. From Based on your summary of the situation, I think those three objectives were met by the agreement and, uh, and we're certainly in a much better place than we could be if other routes had been taken. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks to you and the Industrial Development Board for, for your leadership on this. Thank you. And I and I would add to that uh, in agreement with that absolutely that the, the people are, who are still here who are a part of that, you ought to be proud of it. You really should be proud of the agreement that was made because it was a great deal for Caddo Parish. 
there's been a lot of malignment there's been a lot of misunderstanding there's been a lot of misinformation put out but it was a heck of a deal for Caddo Parish and those who are involved in that at the time ought to be proud of it yes sir Great. Great. Uh, Commissioner Lewis Johnson okay um, yes sir Mr. Wade, once again we thank you so much for coming today and um, I think you did a great job in uh, relating the information and getting clarity to it. Thank you. But I'd also like to say that it's been the goal of the commission to put out as much information as we can. Certainly, out the chairman of our economic development uh, committee, um, Commissioner Atkins has those say very same points yes. and put those points out as best he can for those that will hear. Uh, other members try to relay the facts of the matter as best we can. Um, with the plant being in my district. Um, when Mr. Elio was in town, because I got so many questions um, from the community and from the media, I called a press conference for the same reason, mm -hmm. so that we could get information out and get some clarity to our community as it relates to the specifics. So um, giving factual information is very important to this commission. And there's been great efforts that's gone forward and that continues to go forward. So I applaud uh, Commissioner Chavez for inviting you today. We thank you so very much for coming. And we Thank will you. continue to work to give factual information and do the best that we can Thank to you. give clarity to the matter. Thank you, you, did you a sir. great job and we appreciate you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Lynn. Mr. Wake, thank you so much for coming before us today. I was very fortunate in a meeting that I had with Dr. Wilson last week at the elevators where he showed me how much time y'all were spending um, with the plant, um, with Globus, that y'all were both out there and working or visiting with a lot of the new employees that Globus has hired. Um, and I'm curious, how, how much time have you spent in the last two weeks, two, excuse me, two years um, with administration and legal, um, sending emails back and forth in relation to the, the lease with IRG and Shreveport Business Park? Uh, it would be safe to say I've spent 10% of my time. Okay. Uh, at least 10% of my time. It's something we love to do, and uh, uh, we're happy to do it. Uh, I speak for the whole board. It, we're unanimous in that. In that. Um, I, w I also want to say that uh, we have some new members on our board, and we are uh, planning to have a tour of the plant for them so that they can actually see and touch what it is that they're dealing with and I would invite any commissioners who haven't had that opportunity to join us on that tour so um, I can coordinate that with Dr. Wilson or how, however you want to do that but I'll let you know when we have that scheduled uh, we have talked to uh, Mr. Lichter about it about how to go ahead how to make those arrangements and uh, we plan to do that soon probably in June um, be happy to have any of you that want to go on that tour to do so Thank you. I think almost all of us would like to at least be invited. Good. You um, will. Dr. Wilson also shared with me that the video of the last IRG meeting, excuse me, the last uh, Industrial Development Board meeting, that it was brought up and it, it didn't actually happen. It didn't go to a vote where um, it was asked by you and uh, Mr. Roger Decay to have a, a management company come in, which is what y'all hired IRG Shreveport Business Park to actually do and Dr. Wilson correct me if I'm wrong on this but what I what I heard from Dr. Wilson was that that was not really what y'all meant that y'all right. meant that you wanted someone to come out to inspect the fire extinguishing systems the air conditioning right. systems that yeah, it wasn't a management company what, what we what we agreed to do was to hire someone to come and do an inspection of the plant and give us a report on its status physically how it is how how's the roof how's the electrical how's the plumbing uh, what condition is that building in it's been unoccupied for a number of years we wanted to know what's it what condition is it in right now and so if any of these systems air conditioning fire system plumbing aren't up to speed then are, are you tasked with getting Shreveport Business Park IRG yes. Yes. to then to then yeah. bring it up to, to snuff we would either we, we, yes we would either do that or recommend that the parish do that but in one or the other uh, yes if there's something that seems to be needed uh, we wanted to know about it 
That's all. Uh, it, we felt like as the owner, the technical owner of the property, we have a responsibility to know what condition is it in today. And then to let Caddo Parish know and, and, and let Mr. Lichter know if, any, if something needs to be done. Um, earlier in today's meeting, you, you said yourself that, that Caddo Parish and the Industrial Development Board were faced with either purchase this facility or Racer Trust is going to bulldoze it. Um, who told you that? Uh, the lawyer. Uh, Ray, he's not alive now, but Ray Cornelius. Uh, Did anybody else besides him say that? Uh, I don't remember anybody else saying it, but I, I think that uh, uh, there's historical precedent for that uh, that had been done previously with other properties around the country, and the Racer Trust was created to try to prevent that. Um, also, in, in the agreement, I recognize this also, that there's talk that we didn't, we didn't want Stuart Lichter to immediately flip the facility and make a whole bunch of profit, and so he's incentivized <clears throat> not to sell it, or I guess technically punished in not, pun in not selling it for five years, because if he sells it in less than five years, I believe he has to give 75% of the profit to IDB slash Caddo Parish. Is that correct? Actually, it's 100%. 100%. Yeah. And so is it possible to interpret that he's, he's waiting five years to do anything with it before he actually has any incentive to sell it? Because if anything happens out there, within these five years, then he has to turn around and give 100% of the profit to you and to, or to IDB and to Caddo Parish? I think someone could make that assumption. Uh, we brought up the question to Mr. Lichter, and he was very forthcoming and said, uh, I've, I've done a lot of these, and my interest is in creating jobs. I assure you that is my objective. It hasn't gone as fast as we'd like in Caddo Parish, but we are confident that it is going to work. And he's three and a half years down the road now, so uh, I, don't, I don't think that he'll, uh, I, I don't think he's just waiting another year and a half uh, before he sells the property. And besides that, a three million square foot property is not easily sold. You don't find many prospects for that. <laughs> right, but you could, you could, I mean, at least I can. I can see that a person sitting on a piece of property where nothing's happened for three and a half years where Racer Trust, their charge, Racer Trust charge by the federal government was to create jobs. Right. Their, their charge wasn't to sell a plant to a person that would sit on it for five years so that they could keep 100% of the profit. Their right. charge was to have, have the plant immediately occupied with jobs. Yeah. You, you can see where the public oh, I can see where that could you know somebody could think that um, okay. on the other hand l look at it this way he's spending two hundred thousand dollars a month right Who to upkeep he has spent I don't know how many millions it cost him to clean the plant out the first time I went to the plant and you may have been on that trip we could yeah. barely we could barely get through the plant yeah, it had so much <laughs> it had so much stuff inside it but now when you go out there it's it's a clean floor uh, the remaining equipment is stacked up against the wall. Uh, you can you can actually drive around. It takes a, it takes a vehicle to drive around, and and you can drive around and see what's there. You can see what's available. Um, it, that has been at great cost. I'm sure you spent at least a couple million dollars just cleaning the place out. But uh, uh, yes, I think I think someone could interpret that. Uh, and I mean, and we're just, we're just, time. So sorry. Pardon? Time. My, time is my time has expired. Yeah. Okay. Then, never, then I'm finished. I didn't know I had a time limit on question and answers because I Surprise. was, he was talking. <laughs> you did. Let me. Motion to extend Matthews. I mean, this well, let me just say, we, we've never put a time limit on business. Okay. So I, I didn't, business. yeah, so thank you. I, I will just say. We I don't know if I think, did I answer your question? I mean, I, I, you, you did. did. In the interest of time, okay. And I am okay. wrapping well, it well, well, up. I'm okay. almost finished. Let me just say, in the interest of time, if you could, go ahead. I'm, I'm, I'm wrapping it up, sure. I promise. <laughs> thank like you. Like the award um, shows. <laughs> and so with that, I, I just want everybody to know, I, I have no doubt that Caddo Parish, the commission, 
will make a profit on this deal. I think we've, we've already proven and shown that Caddo Parish will make a profit. But I would, I would like everybody to know that when I was sold this deal, um, that it wasn't about Caddo Parish is going to make a bunch of money on this. And when I say Caddo Parish, I mean the Caddo Parish Commission this money is not being disseminated out to the, the citizens of Caddo Parish. That's true. Um, I was sold this on the fact that that we would create jobs and that we would create jobs instantly, not jobs five years from now. My other worry is, is that there's 65,000 individual citizens of the United States that have paid their $1,000 or $500 to reserve this that have the potential of not receiving their money back and citizens see a large corporation, though I realize that Caddo Parish has no agreement with Elio Motors, though we do have an agreement with a major stockholder of Elio, um, that these citizens have lost in totality about $50 million. And those citizens that have lost $50 million, those 65,000 citizens, they're not going to see the profit that Caddo Parish is going to see, and that makes me very sad. <coughs> That's the end. Thank you, Thank you Commissioner Lynn. Uh, Paul Terry. Paul Terry. Yeah, go up. You want to yes, sir. Coming out and, and for the, the volunteer work to do the IBD. But what, what I wanted to ask <laughs> is what the typical average citizen in Shreveport Caddo major concern was when are we going to get the 1,500 jobs in? And then there's some conversation about where if we kick either your motors out, maybe we could have had some someone else to occupy that plant. I don't know if you can answer this question. With Ford of Elio, is there another viable suitor for the section of the plant that Elio would occupy? Well, there have been. There have been, and that's a good question. There have been, but none of them exercised their option. They came and looked, and a couple of those could have had not only the rest of the plant, but also the Elio property. They could have had that. The agreement between Mr. Lichter and Elio was such that Elio would have moved. Mm -hmm. If another prospect wanted the whole plant, Elio would have moved. That was that came up a couple of times, and okay, so uh, and, and so that hasn't prevented okay. the whole the use of the entire plant. These are the, but, they, but they chose not. Yes, they chose not to not to locate here. Okay. Yes. Right. I'm just, thank you. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Commissioner Bolt. Uh, <coughs> thank you, sir. Uh, thank you again for yes. coming out. I just want, I had a question. Uh, who is actually on the IDB? Oh gosh. And there are uh, eleven of us, I believe. Um, um, well, it's all on the website, I believe. That's it's on the website, it. yes, yeah. and and you all appoint them. Correct. Uh, you and all appoint them, but I, let me think of the ones I can name. Uh, our vice president is Vincent Rice. Our treasurer is Brad uh, Schultz. Uh, Schmidt, Brad Schmidt. Uh, uh, Roger Decay is on there. Uh, Kyle well, McGinnis. Say again. Kyle McGinnis. Kyle McGinnis is a new appointee. Uh, Mr. Ar Dr. Armington is a new appointee. Uh, Tanika, Tanita uh, Baker, Baker, Baker is on there. Um, Ricky Hall. Ricky Hall is a member. Uh, uh, Zell Dudley is a member. Uh, am I leaving anybody out? Larry Ferdinand. Larry Ferdinand. And then the young realtor. What, uh, David Wolf. The mom. Uh, Lamar yeah, Flukers. Lamar Flukers. Yes, sir. Lamar Flukers. Yeah. All right. I just wanted wanted to thank good people. And, yeah, and, I want to thank and, them and, and volunteers and, all. Right. I just uh, want to thank you and them for uh, your priceless and valuable service. <laughs> thank you. Them, thank so. you very much. Yes, sir. It's a pleasure to be here, and thank you all for getting well, the facts out. I have some questions myself here. Yes, sir. Um, you said there is nothing there. Uh, when you say there is <clears> nothing there, are you implying that the equipment is all gone? Oh, you're talking about a, a statement that the TV statement. read? Said, no, you said just a minute ago in your statement there's nothing there. I said there's not much equipment. There's, there, there's, much some, equipment. there's some robots. Okay. Uh, what, I re what I recall seeing on the last tour was uh, a number of robots uh, stacked against the wall, and uh, 
uh, those are they're you know just robotic machines that were used in manufacturing at one time. But right. so most of ev most of everything else is cleared out. And when you go around there, you see piles of salvage being burned and being uh, taken apart and being shipped off uh, by trucks. Right. So so we're basically a shell like this. A right? shell pr primarily, yes. Equipment. Equipment. Yes, sir. Um, you also mentioned um, a value of nine hundred million dollar building. And that was a question that I had had earlier. Yes. Was that the was that the assessed value of the building, or what did you? That get was that the amount they million? spent. I think they spent on it. When they added that last building, I think it was like a hundred million, mm -hmm. and that that brought the total up to nine hundred million. So that's not that, the assessed value of the building. Is that, so just that, that was the actual. That was I think the actual cost of what they paid for it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Paid to build it. Okay. Um, and I heard you say that uh, Mr. Lichter is, um, he's, he has familiarity with this kind of project. Yes, sir. And his successes in other places. And you acknowledge that his success has not trickled down to Shreveport and Cattle Parish. Uh, my question is, who actually bought Elio to the table? The Racer it, Trust. So Racer Trust. Yes, sir. Bought Elio yes, sir. to the table. Not Cattle Parish. They did that, yeah. They brought that. Yeah, it wasn't Cattle Parish. It was the Racer Trust that brought Elio into the formula because they thought there's a, you know, there's a company ready to start. Right, right. And, and uh, I think the principals in the companies all knew each other, and uh, they knew that he was looking for a place. And now have you all invested in Racer Trust? No, the sir. IDB? No, we have no we have no connection with Racer Trust. We have no connection with Elio. Our only connection is with Cattle Parish. And IRG. So no part of the seven and a half million dollars. You can you can firmly attest that no part of the seven and a half million dollars is going to. That's right. Okay. That's right. Um, and I asked those questions. I appreciate you, Gar, for coming down. Thank because, you. Because you know we got to get through the facts, but also what I want uh, us to uh, remember is that, and as I stated earlier, <coughs> in the meeting that we had with our attorney is that Elio is publicly traded now. And so once they file their reports, uh, it becomes it's public information. It becomes public information yes. once a quarter. Yes. And so what's going to happen is it'll go away for a little while. And then the next time he files his quarterly reports with the SEC, uh, it'll be back. If it's not good news, yeah. then that's a bombshell that we have to own. So we cannot, and, um, you know, I have my opinions of the contract. I, I do not think that the contract is in the best interest of the public uh, benefit, but I'm only one of 12, and I've always acknowledged that. I've never said that I'm speaking on behalf of all 12 up here. Uh, because when I see language that the contract or that the terms uh, of, the, of the agreement shall be liberally construed to achieve uh, the best outcome for both parties, that's kind of broad. Uh, especially when we're trying to, when we're trying to hit an end goal, which was the jobs, mm -hmm. and so you know, and I, I kind of understand from a uh, position of where we are <laughs> trying to get the seven and a half million dollars back, and I have to always remind myself not to defend Elio and IRG, yeah. but I need to defend the seven and a half million dollars. <clears throat> but then at the same time, I'm also reminding myself that the seven and a half million dollars was to preserve the plant to bring in jobs and what often happens is we get out here and make the comment as if everything is going well but the moment i step back through that door hmm. uh there's somebody calling Stu lifted uh a melon form oh so what melon form uh-huh uh, you, you, you know where i'm going yeah and so you know he, so we, let's be real sure. about the issues. And I know Mr. Lichter has had some issues about how the media and who keeps bringing his name up. Um, but the conversations that I have uh, indicate that when viable tenants have come to Mr. Lichter, uh, he has not been as receptive mm. and open and responsive as he needs to be. And I want to make sure that while, you know, <laughs> the best deal that could get done was done, I'm not arguing that. Well, I've had two conversations uh, with Mr. Lichter personally where I asked a question about some of those prospects. Mm -hmm. And he was very forthcoming and gave the details. Okay. And the details were that the deal didn't fit. Right. It just didn't fit. Right. Uh, uh, 
he was very he was very open about it and said you know <coughs> if if this had fit this is how we would have done it yeah. but it didn't fit for them and it didn't fit for us right. so I, I I accept uh, what he said and I I have uh, I was concerned myself right. because you hear rumors right. and people say things well, to I, you well, well and I have heard information directly from folks working with the prospects yes that we have not you know we're trying to reach out we're trying to get information right and we haven't heard a response back yes and, so, and candidly we have had a couple maybe more than a couple conversations about let's improve our communication right. And let's commu let us improve That's our right. communication. And we've written some letters, and we get responses. Yes. And so we're, we're doing we what we need to do. And we have we have had our attorney address that communication issue, Thank and you. we're getting regular reports now. Thank so you. And I think we there have was a time be, when we didn't. I think we have to be open with yeah. folks. Everybody's not going to understand it. Right. The, the, the information that we get, every we can't expect everybody to digest it, but we at least have to acknowledge it and own it. Yeah. I think that's where a lot of what we can fix a lot of this is we have to accept it and own it so we can go forward because there was a communication challenge there. Um, uh, and, and that basically wraps up. I, I do want to thank the guard, uh, what the IED does, what you guys do. You operate sort of in a very uh, strange manner, but that's the way the state <coughs> law set it up. Yeah. But for you to do those sort of obscure projects um, because the, set, the 12 of us around here just can't sit around and do it and we don't have the staff that's dedicated to those kind of things so you working with scott and led i, I uh, couldn't help i couldn't help but think back when i was on the police jury there were 22. yeah mm -hmm. yep. that yeah. was really a challenge yeah. <laughs> so, so man it's so, you know uh <laughs> well, economic development fun. economic <laughs> development is long-term work yes. and you learn that it's long-term and we're investing for the future but we are I also want us to remember that we have to acknowledge that <coughs> there have been some bumps in the road. Sure. That, and Absolutely. there are some things that we can do better to acknowledge. Uh, I want to, at some point, get with administration because I was looking through the lease agreement or the information that we have on our online database, uh, <coughs> and I made a, I made a, I sent an email that um, our lease agreement that's out there. None of them are executed. It's all the proposed lease agreements. I think we can do a better job at mm. updating that information and putting the actual executed lease agreements out there because what's on there now mm. is what's been scratched through. I that didn't know that. Yeah. I so if we can that. get that updated, uh, if mm. we can get the talking points that we have updated. Sure. And uh, we just got to reach out to our friends at the party. And I kept seeing you turning that way, so I assumed you were talking to them. Well, just talking to everybody. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> okay. But we want to do a better job at, at continuing the get ahead of that. Sure. Message. So appreciate you for coming down and thank you all for your work. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Linda. Right. Thank you. Uh, Lord, finished? Yeah, just a couple of things. Oh, uh, yes, going sir. further even back, when the talk was to shut down the General Motors plant, when they had some meetings with the public on what the use of the plant would be, um, the people in this area said that they wanted to keep it manufacturing and they also wanted to try to make it so that it was an automotive plant mm -hmm. as well. So that was one of the reasons why Elio came into the picture, the racer group, uh, to try to fulfill the public desires of trying to keep that kind of thing going into the plant. Sure. And all this was done before the parish was, was even involved or even approached about the building. Uh, glad that you brought up the piece about the equipment. Um, I tried to do the same deal last week uh, with one of the news stories, but that part they didn't really want to hear. <laughs> Uh, the the story has been twisted so much that the public is misinformed and when you try to educate them on what really went on and the ones that will listen come back and say well you know that's not a bad deal mm -hmm. um, but when you have the constant bloggers just putting a twist to it that yeah. will keep the negative side out then it, it overshadows the actual truth yeah. uh, and, I, and I'm glad that you came down and told that so now we have it as minutes and I would request that what he said be verbatim in our minutes so that we have that for future reference and the Q&A yeah. uh, that that would be you know verbatim so we'll have it as mm -hmm. official minutes and that will be on record forever uh, the, um, the piece about when we got involved 
and us just buying the shell. And to look at a, a $900 million building that was built, um, <laughs> take away some of the equipment, and still we bought it at a bargain. Sure. Um, and if we hold on to it for, if, for five years and one day, and he decides to buy it and make a $20 million profit on it, mm -hmm. the parish still has a $7.5 million plus the 8% interest. So uh, I'm not really too concerned about that piece of it. Uh, my vote back then was to make sure that we could salvage the building, to make sure that jobs could potentially come out here. And with Globus Hyundai Kia, we actually do have some jobs that are out there right now. Uh, almost 200, I think it's 186, and, uh, 200. Yes. Throw in the salary people as well. So you got about 200 employees out there right now that are working with another company that nobody even knew about was going to even happen, but it's happening. And that part of it has not even been really brought up in the news. A little bit, but not, not much. as much as right. it should be of trying to welcome Glovers here mm -hmm. to show them that they, they can get some positive news and it might even increase their sales of some cars. You never know. But at the yeah. same time, you know, all the negative news that comes out of Shreveport, if I was a, a Fortune 500 company, why would I want to sell it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so we gotta, we got to work together <laughs> instead of working opposite angles of saying, well, the commission didn't do this or another governing body didn't do that. We're trying to do the best what we can do with the information that we have, with the outlook of trying to help as many citizens in Cattle Parish as possible. Thank you. And I, and I thank you for what you do. On your thank you. That's it, Gar. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good luck to you all. Thanks thank for you having Garth. me. Thank you, and thank you all for making those accommodations to accommodate public needs as well. You bet. We'll, you. we'll talk some more about that. Appreciate it. <laughs> uh, well, let me, let, before we suspend the rules, uh, Ms. Perlow <coughs> has been, has she, oh, yeah. she has been waiting patiently. Yes, she has. Next, next uh, we have Mrs. Lamisha. She will ask her principal to get off early. I know. Ms. Furlow Flurry, Bullying Awareness. Come on up, Ms. Furlow. She was giving us that look like, well, y'all just did it. She was bullying you? I don't, I wouldn't call it bullying. <laughs> Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I want to show a promo video before I get started. Um, of course, I am Lamisa Furlow Flurry, and um, I am a school counselor certified national board certified counselor as well as a mental health first aid instructor yes. but um, I want to show you a little bit about my bullying awareness program and hopefully hit some high points and answer any questions you may have
I want to um, thank Commissioner Wise for the opportunity, and I'm so excited and happy to be here. I'm not going to take long at all, um, but I am here to spread bullying awareness. I have my own anti-bullying program, Shut Down Bullying Now. And I was inspired because I am a school counselor, and I see it happening so much, even in my school. And I can say, since I have been implementing the <coughs> program, I've seen a significant change. I had all of this on PowerPoint, but it's not working. But hey, everything happens for a reason. And it's OK. We're going to rock and roll because we learn to adapt and overcome. That's it. Um, mm -hmm. Come on. Um, I like to define bullying because so many people don't understand that it's OK to have a conflict. But bullying is so different because it is habitual. It happens over and over. And it's intentional, and it's meant to be mean. Mm. And also, there's some type of imbalance of power that happens, whether it's regular bullying or cyberbullying. And the only difference with cyberbullying, of course, is the electronic device or social media that um, this behavior is taking place on. As far as conflict and bullying is concerned, I love to make sure that my audience understands that there's a big difference because a lot of times the bully, the bully has no remorse and the bully always wants to blame the victim. Oh, if she wouldn't have done this, I wouldn't have done that. Or if he wouldn't have done this, I wouldn't have done that. Whereas in a conflict you may have with a friend or a family member, there's some type of resolve. You want to resolve the situation and you, you know, you have as much force. I said something to you, so you said something to me back. Whereas with bullying, someone feels a lack of power taking place. Now, we have so many um, roles, but I like to categorize in three basic roles. We have the victim, or the person being bullied, the aggressor, the person who is displaying the behavior of bullying, and of course we have the bystander, the person who sees the bullying happening. Now, you have the bystander that will say something and do something about it. And then you have that bystander that sits back and laughs. And yeah, that bystander is just as responsible as that bully. So um, there's something called relational aggression. And statistically, girls bully more than boys. Mm. But their lack of reporting. Now, this is only because of something called relational aggression. And if you've ever heard the term mean girls or gossiping or those three-way calls when someone's on the other line oh. and they don't know it and, you, oh, she's talking about you, that's a form of bullying called relational aggression. Mm. And sometimes, you know, what you say, a lot, what you say, it hurts. It, it never goes away. People may get hurt physically and then they heal up. But what you say never, ever goes away. Um, I love to show how music, the music industry, has grasped the concept of bullying. You have people like Taylor Swift who makes songs about it. You have Christina Aguilera. Um, she wants to let people know that you're beautiful no matter who you are, no matter what you are. And you shouldn't let words bring you down, although they hurt. You just build upon that. And in my program, I love to let people know who you are, and you have to oh, stand up for what you Second. believe in. Second. And she's if a you're visitor. Yeah, she's, she's a visitor. Time but they have yeah, yeah. No, no, no. yeah, she's a visitor. Keep on, Keep on going. And if you're confident <laughs> in who you are, and you have that support, it can make a huge difference. One important thing um, with cyberbullying, you have apps. Um, I did have pictures of the apps, but you have apps like Yik Yak where you send yes and you're anonymous, but you get to post things about people and they don't know who you are. And then you have this messenger app called Kick. And a lot of the kids use Kick because it's like, um, it's like Messenger, like for Facebook, but you get to see your picture, you can send video, you can send text messages. And a lot of parents, they'll say, hey, let me check your phone, let me see these text messages. But there are no text messages because it's inside of the app. And the thing about an app, foreign countries own these apps. They have access to whatever you send through those apps. And if mom or dad looks at a 
phone bill and it's detailed billing, they're not going to be able to see what time and when you sent the message because it's not detailed, it's not through text messaging. So a lot of the children are smart about that and it's not so smart because they may be in harm's way. Um, unless the parent actually goes into the app, you have no record of what's going on as far as the messages are concerned. You have things like Snapchat where they think it disappears. Nothing ever really disappears. No. You have a snap, it's supposed to go away within 24 hours. If you send a direct message, whatever they see, whatever video you send, it's supposed to go away in about 10 seconds. And um, you're not supposed to be able to screenshot it. If you do, it sends the person a notification. But nobody is ever really safe because they can screenshot whatever you put that you think is temporary and put it on another site like YouTube or Facebook. And here we go. And we have cyberbullying taking place. And then one more thing, they have something, well, they, it's, it's, um, it's done with. It doesn't exist anymore, but it's called Poop. But every day, they're creating new apps like Poop. It's where you have apps that you don't want your parents or want people to see, and it hides it. And if you don't know what it is, you don't know that all those apps that you don't want people to see that are on your phone is inside of that. They have calculator apps that looks like a calculator. <laughs> Yeah, and it hides apps that you don't want people see to see. Like Pictures, videos, they have secret vault Everything. apps. And all of that is very important for us to be aware of it and know about it. Because bullying can lead to suicide. And so many times it's happened. Not only can it lead to suicide, but it can lead to school violence. And on April 20th, 1999, although there have been so many documented reports <coughs> of uh, school violence, April 20th, 1999 changed the course of American history because that's when Columbine happened. Mm -hmm. And when Eric Harris and Dylan Claywell came into that school and took those lives, they took 13 lives, 15 including themselves, that's not what they were planning to do. They were planning to kill multiple hundreds of people, but no life should have been taken at all. Mm -hmm. But things like that happened. And I stress the importance, you don't know what somebody is going through. Eric Harris, personality disorder. Dylan Flavel, depression. You know, you don't know what people, going, people are going through. You don't know if they entered some type of psychosis. And allegedly they were bullied as well. Right. And um, so many things can lead up to it. <coughs> so I always try to um, help people recognize the signs of bullying. If someone is withdrawn, if someone doesn't want to go to school or work even, um, if you notice know changes, changes, but it's always important to communicate. Communication is key because a lot of these things can mean something else is going on. It's not always necessarily bullying. So um, we shut it down by acknowledging or looking at, hey, is this bullying behavior, identifying it. Then you want to take back your power. You want to let the bully know that's not going to happen, you're, this is not happening with me. Even if you're not that confident, you want to act like you're that confident because eventually you'll become confident. And then you want to always, always report the behavior. And last but not least, I'm so excited because um, I'm working with Senator Mivelvich and he has proposed a bill. So we're going through looking at some things because a lot of the bullying policies <coughs> They direct you back to your individual school systems in the state of Louisiana. And even with that, there are there's so much vagueness going on with it. So we want to make sure that we can make sure that the behavior is habitual or, or that it's documented properly so that someone can get help. Thank you so much for your time. And if you have any questions, I'm here. All right. Thank you, Ms. Blair, so much uh, for coming down, presenting that information. Um, somebody in the queue, uh, Commissioner Gage Watts, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Blurry, so much for coming down today. Normally, we don't have you down that far on the agenda, but as you can see, we had some other things going on today. So thank you. I know you had to get off early to be here uh, to share with us about bullying awareness. I asked Ms. Flores to come down because we're going into the summer months and I thought that it would be vital information for the public to hear 
what they should look for during this time of the year because just because school is out doesn't mean that the bullying stops. That's true. They still have camp, summer camps and daycares and they're still out in the streets with their peers. So that was my major reason for inviting you here today and to give exposure on the campaign that I so believe in. If there's anything that I could do with you, with the bill, with Senator Milkovich, know that I'm here for you. And thank you for all that you're doing to make a difference in our community. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Lewis Johnson. They were testing the system. Okay. Come away. Well, appreciate it, Ms. Fleur. We, okay. we apologize for the extended yeah. time, but that's the way we work down here. And Thank let you, us Ms. know, uh, are you in touch with Clay Walker? You could get in touch with Clay Walker. He's over at Juvenile Services, and and he's also uh, working with the Children, Youth, and Planning Board. They do a coordinated effort, uh, getting all of the agencies together. And I know you're over with the uh, charter school, right? I'm at Southern Hills. Oh, yeah, Southern. I thought you, okay, I thought you had no good. I'm sorry. Um, uh, but if you could uh, get with him, and they have a coordinated effort to uh, work on those things. So appreciate everything that you're doing. Thank you. We have a motion to suspend the rules. Second. There was a motion to suspend the rules to go back to public comments by Commissioner Cawthorn, second by Commissioner Chavez. Then objection to suspend the rules to go back to public comments. There is no objection. Mr. Benjamin Arnold, if you could please come up, state your name and record for Name and address for the record. I'm sorry. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Benjamin Arnold, 9516 Central Drive, 24718. Um, I appreciate this opportunity to uh, speak with the commission. And I was going to address the issue of the um, of the move of the Confederate Memorial in front of the courthouse, but. Um, I forwarded you all copies of the letter, and I appreciate your reception and, and comments on it and everything, and I <laughs> look forward to engaging in the public discussion, who it should be decided by. The people should decide on that. Um, and I also want to say I have great respect for, um, for Gard. I mean, he's, a, he's really a tremendous individual, but I have to, I have to <laughs> comment on a few of the issues related to the former GM plan. The question is not, whether or not the investment has worked out. I mean, hey, it's great. A chance was taken, it worked out. The question is whether or not it should have been done in the first place. Mm -hmm. That is not government responsibility. That is the responsibility of the private sector. When the government decides on who or how money is spent, that's like a Sophie's choice. That's like the government saying, okay, this business is going to survive, but these businesses aren't. You want to help the community, I mean, because the, the profit on this deal is very vertical. But you want to spread that out? Make low interest loans to the struggling, locally owned small businesses. I mean, you give money to nonprofit agencies, and it goes directly back into the uh, community. So if you're going to take that initiative, make small loans. People are still struggling, filing bankruptcy and such. They're still struggling. And people say, well, new businesses aren't being started. Hey, guess what? If you go north of 3132 and west of I-49, there's not a single road that you can drive down that you won't see a dozen businesses out there that are locally owned. But the difference, and, I, and the reason I wanted to comment on this is because this is, this is just the best example of what we're facing with moving the Confederate Memorial. There is a thriving economy in Shreveport, but it's among the black population. And unfortunately, there are those who want to frame this discussion as black and white. It's really not. It's about, mar it's about market issues. It's about, it's about uh, competition for resources. And unfortunately, there is a significant portion of our community that are not getting the same investment and attention as they should. You ask people in Shreveport, are there any new businesses? Oh, no, we don't have any new business. Drive down 70th Street. You'll see a dozen of them in a block. So there are new businesses here. But I, I digress. It is. Time expired. That's a motion for. See no motion to continue. 
Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Arnold. We are, is there a motion to go back into our regular so move? Move by Commissioner Gage Walker, second. second by Commissioner Dominic to go back into our regular order. Is there any objection to going back into our regular order? Seeing no objection, we are back in your hands, Mr. Clerk. All right, next we move to special resolution. Special resolution recognizing Mrs. Mary Alice Roundtree, Cattle Council on Aging. Move to postpone this to the first regular session. Second, second. meeting in, in June. Uh, Moved by Commissioner Johnson, second by Commissioner Dominic to postpone. Uh, do we need to take a vote on that? Or we can just do the whole that? thing in, in first of June. Okay, all right. So that is postponed until June. Yeah. All right, next. Just need, uh, do we need to vote? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, okay, okay. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. That's what I was asking. You to vote. So please vote on postponing <laughs> to the first meeting in June. That passes unanimously. Next, we we'll adopt the regular session Good minutes from May 4th. Second Thank by you. Commissioner Lynn, second by Commissioner Gage Watts. Any other questions to adoption of the minutes? Please vote. <coughs> that passes 12 0. Next, we we'll move to communication committee reports, administration response to information requests from commissioners. Go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, President uh, Jackson, Commissioners. Yes. Uh, on last Friday, our employee council members participated in the United Way Day of Caring, and the project was at the uh, Glenn Retirement Home located on East Barnard Lucas. And today, I have uh, as our guests some of our employee council <coughs> members, Ms. Toya Edwards and Ms. Mr. <laughs> this was Ariel Clark. You all know her from Ariel's yeah. area. She's the secretary for the employee council. Mr. Troy Harris, she's a, another board member. And Ms. Clark was a project leader for the project, and she's going to give us an update on what they did at the Glen uh, Retirement Home. Good afternoon, Commission. Good afternoon. Um, afternoon. This is Ariel Clark. Um, as Dr. Wilson has already stated, with us today, we have our Vice President, Ms. Uh, Toya Edwards and Mr. Detroit Harris. Um, we just would like to thank you guys so very much for giving us the opportunity and allowing us to go down and participate in the United Way Day of Caring. Um, we went to the Glen Nursing Home and we were able to partake in um, a lovely game of beanbag uh, baseball where they smoked us, I must oh, say. Really? Oh, really? <laughs> yes. <clears throat> the <laughs> final score, I'm embarrassed to say, was 19 to 9. Wow. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> yeah. They take, uh, they take it very serious, um, and they are very proud of that game, and they were very excited That's to cool. share that experience with us. We also partake in um, pet therapy, um, which is where they bring dogs around the nursing home and just give a little bit of joy um, to the residents there. Um, we also met Miss Charlie, who was very proud to tell us that she was 101 years old. All right. She um, she was moving sometimes. She was moving better than me. She was <laughs> moving around. She was very active in the beanbag um, baseball. Um, Mr. Detroit, she she got a kick out of out of him. Um, she told him that she was watching him. <laughs> um, don't mess with her as far as the beanbag baseball and then we also got to meet um, Miss Ruby who was 98 years old and we got to visit with her um, and she was very sassy I must say. Um, we also met another resident who touched my heart um, just because when we asked her how she was feeling today her response was that she was not happy. Um, we, we found out that she did not have any family oh. um, so us being there and being able to be there with her and visit with her made her day. <laughs> we sung um, You Are My Sunshine and we sung Jesus Loves Me to her and when we left she was actually about to cry because she was very happy that we were there. Oh, so again, all that to say those experiences were very, touched our heart and we we're very thankful for the commission and especially Dr. Wilson and his administrative staff to allow us to participate in that because it is something and it is very nice to give back to those who came before us. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have any Anybody questions? Else want to? Yeah. Ms. Toy, you want to tell us about the employee picnic that's coming up? I didn't, but I will. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, June 10th 
um, we will be having an employee picnic. Um, our employee council has raised the money ourselves. None of the money will be coming from Cattle Parish. We have raised the money ourselves. <laughs> and we have mm -hmm. asked our administrator, our assistant administrator, and all of our directors and assistant directors for a certain amount. I'm not going to say how much we asked them for. And they all hopefully will give it. And we will purchase all of our items. We'll have um, games, food. We will have door prizes. And we want everybody to come out and have fun with us. At Earl Williams Park. At, yeah. Yes. Earl G. Williams Park. Earl Williams Park. 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 And it will start at 11. So what date? 10. June 10th. June 10th. Y'all get that to Todd if y'all want us to. Yeah. Yes, we'll have flyers. We'll email them out once we get yeah, them Yeah, please yeah. do. And, and for the, yes. the commissioners who desire to come, you're more than welcome to come. That's what and I want. And also donate if you like to we, to the cause. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I saw you <laughs> writing the check. <laughs> was that the check you were writing when I was that the check you was writing when I walked into the office earlier? Uh, no, come no, in. Sir, they want cash. Oh, <laughs> that, <laughs> oh they don't do checks. So the check we had had a comment, so I didn't. I well, gave you a check, can no, donate. We, we appreciate anybody who would like to donate, yeah. even commissioners. If you would like to donate, we appreciate it. And one other thing, too, I'd like to give them uh, it was a good point that because they have done a great job, Yeoman's job, putting on the annual employee recognition program. Yes. And uh, they do a lot of projects and they do a class act. And, uh, we meet with them once a month, talk about various issues around the organization. They've been a very effective sounding board in helping us address the concerns of the working file. So I really appreciate them, what they do. They're very dedicated uh, individuals. So thank you, Toya. Thank you so much for being here and being part of the great organization for what you do for us at the Council. Thank you. Thank you. Hip hip hooray. I will, I, I will I say y'all are reflective of leadership, but he might he might take off for a couple months. The last time we gave him some compliments, we didn't see him for a couple months. Oh. I just wanted to say that we did have pictures, um, and I believe Miss Friendly, are they on? Yeah, they're on the website. Okay, they are on the website, so I'd like to encourage you guys to go take a look at the pictures. Thank you. They were very nice. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you, you Ariel. All right. Uh, Commissioner Lynn. Oh, was that it, Dr. Wilson? All right, that was our presentation for the day. Okay. Commissioner Lynn. This is Tyson Anyway, I, I feel very fortunate that I bumped into Dr. Wilson at the elevator because he was able to clear up um, a misconception that I had in relation to watching the, the Industrial Development Board meeting. And after we, after we met, I went back and I watched the meeting again just to see how far off base I was. And after watching it the second time, even after your explanation, I still came away with what I had thought the first time. And so thank you so much. And I, that, that clarification really helped. And I, and I would hope that when you see something out there, that stated that might not be exactly the way it is, that you would send all the commissioners an email so that I don't have to just <laughs> haphazardly luck into riding the elevator with you and right. getting and getting you know the rest of the story. So, so please thank thank you very much for what you did the other day. And anytime you see a scenario that would create that opportunity to to bring truth to to. The misinformation. I would. I would greatly appreciate an email for everybody. Thank you. That's all. Thank you, uh, Vice President Dunn. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, say thank you to uh, Deputy Sheriff Tadlock and Win. Uh, this past Sunday, I was coming home from baseball practice and had a flat. Uh, grew up changing tires, but uh, tell you what, it's it's changed today. You have a little <laughs> thing to screw. We had to. Uh, Deputy Win said go to YouTube and figured out how to lower the tire. Um, they stayed out there about an hour so I, I could get a flat on Highway 1 and uh, it was it was extremely hot. Uh, they were there for safety reasons and as soon as I uh, got the flat taken care of, they got a call and they were off. So I uh, wanted to just tell you that everything that I've ever dealt with over the last 20 something years, I've been practicing law with the Cattle Care <coughs> Sheriff's Office and the deputies, has always been positive and uh, especially this past weekend, I just wanted to Thank uh, again, Deputy Tadlock and Deputy uh, Wynn for their help. That's it. Uh, Commissioner Lyndon Johnson. Thank you. I just want to clear up uh, another misconception. 
that has been on one of the local media, news media stations, that uh, I am not, I am not uh, trying to lead a charge on a federal investigation on two former commissioners. Uh, that was some, that was mistaken. Uh, they asked me about two commissioners. And so that two commissioners turned into <coughs> want to lead a charge into doing that and it's time that is not here. It's somebody leave so uh, just want to make sure to clear that up for one. Second of all, Tuesday I went to the uh, monument, uh, Confederate monument uh, meeting and um, I was glad to see so many people that were there that was talking about the, the pros and cons of actually to move it and not to move it and that it was actually done in a civilized manner. Uh, they have one or two that kind of got uh, out of hand, but they quickly got back in control. And with <coughs> the the people that were there, uh, I was surprised to see as many saying that they would like to see it moved. Uh, a lot of them wanted to be moved to a museum or some other prominent point that people could go to and, and look at it. Um, and then there's others that say, you know, the parish don't don't have enough money to move it because if you break something, you gotta replace it. So I've heard all the, the pluses and minuses from the group that was there, and I think most of them, some of them, about a handful, would be going to each location <laughs> and stay, stating their their case. So today at uh, Dunny Bickham, I'm quite sure that you hear some of the same comments that were heard Tuesday. Uh, but I just want to say that the committee is, is working hard to try to come up with a solution, and um, I think we still need to appoint another person since one is dropped off. So, um, from what I saw, it was it was good to see that. Thank you. That's it, uh, Commissioner Chavez. Uh, thank you, President. <clears throat> uh, I agree with uh, LBJ. I, I went to the first meeting, and they did a great job. I really appreciate RJ for doing that. And uh, likewise, they had one guy pull off. I know two people have been submitted uh, and they send their application to Todd. I told RJ that uh, I would ask Todd to send them to all of us and that we review that and for our next meeting we all look at that and <clears throat> as opposed to sending it to committee um, I think it would be fair if all the commissioners voted on which one who they would like to replace the, uh, the, the one that left. Um, and then this weekend I wanted to put out <clears throat> it's the uh, Fit for Life. I don't know if you guys knew about that. Uh, Superman's doing that at the Shreveport Convention Center from 9 to 5. It's the free event. They're going to do amateur boxing, taekwondo, kids karate, uh, soccer tournament, archery, uh, arm wrestling, and uh, grappling, and a lot of local health, fitness, uh, and welfare uh, different exhibits. Uh, so definitely welcome the public out for that. <clears throat> I also wanted to thank, uh, it's from 9 a.m. to 5, uh, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. And it's a free thing for the public. Right. Uh, the Youth Challenge Program has come out, and uh, yesterday they were cleaning out my district, picking up trash. Uh, today I know they were over there at uh, Lewis Johnson's uh, district. Uh, they were cleaning up over on Pine Road, and they're going to hit up uh, Hollywood um, and Monkhouse tomorrow. So I, I really appreciate that. I know a lot of people don't know that, that they do that, but every month they're coming out and they're cleaning up different areas of Shreveport. Uh, so very thankful for those guys and the hard work that they do. That's all, President. All right. Um, Commissioner Gage Watt. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I would like to say that uh, earlier today I had a chance to speak at the Juvenile Detention Center, uh, speak to the juveniles over there, and they were very respectful and receptive to the panel of guests who were invited over. And I invite each one of you within the next two weeks to get with Clay or Muriel or Mrs. Woods on making some type of arrangements to go over there and to speak to those juveniles. They need to hear from us. <coughs> they need to know that we care and that there is someone in their corner, even if it's not at home. So that was a very rewarding experience on today. So I thank you um, for the excellent job that you're doing over there and continue to keep up the good work. Also, uh, on Tuesday night, I was able to attend a neighborhood association meeting where there were several neighborhoods in District 7 that joined together to address crime. And I would just like to commend um, Chief Deputy um, Jay Long, who was there. He did an excellent job of representing the parish and stating that we are here to do whatever we can do. 
Next, I would like to invite everyone to the second annual Shreveport Citywide Sickle Cell Motorcycle Ride on May 27th from 8 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. will be the registration. The safety briefing will be from 9 to 10 a.m. It will be located at 1640 Murphy at Pier Avenue, St. Mer St. Matthews AME parking lot. Say the name, of the, the name of the event again, I'm sorry. The second annual Shreveport Citywide Sickle Cell Motorcycle Ride. That's the 27th. 27th, okay. If you would like more information, you may contact Robo at 773-8534 or Tony at 344-5000. Can you, can you get that to Michelle? Uh, sure. sure. That will conclude my comments. <laughs> thank you. Um, <coughs> Next. Next we have a presence report. Uh, thank you. Um, the animal service issue uh, kind of uh, Raised an eyebrow. Can, are we are we going to address that that issue? Did y'all get with that lady? Uh, yes. Yeah. Sir, sir. Okay. Okay. And and I guess what the the real issue is if if nobody's responding to her, the the issue is what what are other folks? Because I've also uh, matter of fact, I did a, a paint your heart out. And I'm going to send you that address. I did get your note. Um, but we you know, y'all didn't see the dogs in the no, back. Oh, the well, that was on the horses. I'm sorry. They had some dog issues over there as well. I think that area probably needs some attention. Um, but, uh, you know, I, do we have somebody that's 24 hours that can be dispatched out? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Uh, let's just, you know, that, that just kind of stood out and it raised an eyebrow. So hopefully we can monitor and follow up, especially uh, she makes a good point. And I, and I just feel some kind of way for our citizens who, um, and it's throughout, especially in the inner city, and I'm sure the inner city commissioners can attest <coughs> that individuals, uh, I have literally seen neighborhoods <coughs> evolve over the years, and I know I'm not speaking for myself, where folks invest in their neighborhoods, but just because they get a little older and they can't uh, get up and move around like they do, uh, the renters come in and start to take over the neighborhood and it starts going down. I'm not saying a broad generalization of all renters, that's not the case, uh, but uh, no one should be afraid in their home or feel like they're a victim in their home, uh, whether it's crime, whether it's animal issues, whether it's property standards. Uh, we just got to make sure that we are protecting those folks. And that, just something about that just makes me, to just raise an eyebrow for me um, and stands out for me. Uh, Mark, I appreciate you guys. I got... Um, um, uh, the email from Alan on the issue out there. I don't know what that is. <laughs> I'm glad they found it. It's in a very weird location, but I'm glad because I was starting to think maybe I was going crazy when he said he couldn't find it. But I'm glad he found it. And I don't know if y'all contacted the property owners. And I think it gets bigger over the weekend. So it's not just that trailer. It's a trailer. It's a couple of trailers over the weekend. Still. And as people are passing through Shreveport, that's not what well, that we don't want that to be our welcome time. Uh, uh, expungement summit and the uh, other um, our other deal with the DA office that we're working with them on. If we could go ahead and get those back up, I think you're going to get the group together, Commissioner Gage Watts and everybody else who was involved with that, uh, Dr. Wilson, to get us together and just go forward with it. Uh, I may be there, I may not, but please, if I'm not there, don't don't let the progress stop. Um, personnel and policies, uh, Commissioner Lewis. I'll get with you so we can hopefully schedule the personnel and policies yes, uh, committee, hopefully before, maybe before our next work session, but I do want to get with you on that. Um, appreciate you, Henri. I think we had some requests coming in, and I do want to return your call. I'll get with you after this meeting. I've been traveling this week, um, but uh, I did hear back from a couple of folks that you got with, but thank you for uh, following up with them. And uh, if, if we have anything going on with that safe summer stuff, Let's get with Henri so they can plan it out, be on top of it, and get it coordinated as well. And thank you for working with the uh, with the basketball group, uh, giving those children an opportunity to be safe. Uh, Seems like Dr. Gore dodges me every time uh, I'm supposed to talk to him about uh, working with us on the uh, leasing of the building, but I'll corner him uh, sooner or later. 
But appreciate you and thank you for that. And that uh, includes my report. Thank everybody for their diligence. Next, we move to public hearing on zoning ordinances, zoning case appeal, BAP 1517, 7406 Burials Drive, north side of Burials Drive, approximately 949 feet north of Chuck A Drive. Applicant Daphne Elaine Williams and Katrina Rochelle Williams. Appellant Willie Henderson. Mr. Henderson filed an appeal with the Cattle Parish Commission on April 20th. This time, public hearing. Oh, uh, public hearing for which one is that? Public hearing for zoning case is now open. Public hearing for that zoning case. Is there anyone here to speak in favor of this zoning matter? Is there anyone here to speak in opposition of this zoning matter? I see none. That's public hearing is closed. So I close the public hearing on zoning matters. We move to public hearing on ordinances. Ordinance number 5678 of 2017 authorizes the parish administrator destiny to lease certain residential property at Fort Wade at market rates to parish employees. Is there anyone here to speak in favor of 5678 of 2017? Is there anyone here to speak in opposition of 5678 of 2017? See none. Next, we move to ordinance number 5691, amending the budget of estimate revenues and expenditures, solid waste disposal fund, and the public works for the year 2017 to appropriate $1,258,230 for the Bittler Steel sales tax rebate. Is there anyone here to speak in favor of Ordinance 5691 of 2017? Is there anyone here to speak in opposition of Ordinance 5691 of 2017? I see no ordinance one. number 5693 declaring certain adjudicated properties to be surplus and authorized parish administrator or designee to sell the parish of the Caddo's tax interest in certain surplus adjudicated properties. Is there anyone here to speak in favor of Ordinance 5693 of 2017? Is there anyone here to speak in opposition of Ordinance 5693 of 2017? I see no one, Mr. Clerk. Ordinance number 5694 of 2017, to close and abandon a certain alley in a portion of a street dedication located in forming factory subdivision in the parish of Caddo. Is there anyone here to speak in favor of Ordinance 5694 of 2017? Is there anyone here to speak in opposition of Ordinance 5694-2017? I see no one. That closes our public hearings on ordinances. We move to zoning case appeal. Zoning case BAP 1517-7406 Barrios Drive. Appeal to the Keto Commission. Uh, the, the motion would need to be either to overturn the, MPC, the CBA decision uphold the decision or remand to ZBA. Those were the three okay. motions you would have to use. So what would be the pleasure of the member of District 7 or is there a motion? District. I thought he said District 10. Yes, yes, seven. Seven. Yes. Seven. Seven. Uh, seven. Overturned the um, send it back to... Um, so you want to send it back? Yeah. So she wants to make a motion to send it back? Second. To remand it back? Is remand that what you back. want to do? Yes. yes. True. For approval or whatever they're going to do. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. ZBA. Okay, so there's a motion by commission. Uh, we might want to double check. Leave. Do we need to overturn that or just remand it back? back. Just, just overturn it. Overturn. I, get, I guess this. I'm I'm a little confused because I'm not sure what we were remanding it back for. If um, special acceptance. I mean, because if if you accept their recommendation, it would be to approve. If you don't want to accept their recommendation, it would be to overturn. Okay. So let me withdraw. And start over. Okay. So I withdraw their motion. I withdraw my second. Okay. So I make the motion to overturn <coughs> the decision. Okay. Second. Moved by Commissioner Gates Watts, second by Commissioner Linda Johnson to overturn the decision. There is any did you want to speak on your motion? Uh, from what I see, um, they already have the support of their neighbors. On here, they have a petition that's been signed. No one is in objection to them building the home to their specifications. You want to speak on your yeah. second? No, I was just letting you know. I, don't, yeah. I, I think I'm confused now. Mm -hmm. I think I may be confused. Because I so, thought we was on then. That's what I said. There's, you're saying there's no objection to, so are you, there's one do you want to do this? Oh, is this Willie? That's the only one that objected to it? Yes, the, he's appealing it, correct? This is, this is right. Mr. Right. Willie Henderson okay. is appealing it. Because they have <coughs> letters of a petition of support. Let me go to it. Let me cook it. Well, he, I guess he would have letters of opposition. 
he would be the opposition. There was a Mr. Mr. Henderson is the person, the appellant, yeah. that is appealing right. the decision and from the CBA. Okay. And he sent a letter in yesterday. It's attached. Okay. Right here. And the others are in favor of it. Right. So the other eight. Him. Right. So the petition is in favor. Yeah, the petition is in favor, but Willie Henderson is in opposition. He's in it. opposition. So do you? The current uh, position in front of you is that they have been uh, allowed to uh, proceed. So the current decision from the ZBA is favorable uh, to the persons who requested the zoning exception. Yeah, let's postpone this. And let me uh, get a little deeper Yeah. <coughs> uh, with Mr. Henderson. Okay. Well, there's a motion to postpone. I'll second that motion to postpone for what, the next meeting? Yes. Okay, so uh, there's first a motion. First meeting in June. First meeting in June, motion by Commissioner Gage Watt, second by the chair to postpone for the first meeting in June mm -hmm. uh, so she can follow up. And maybe, Stephen, if you could, I uh, see you back there, if you could reach out to Commissioner Gage Watt um, to uh, contact her on Please vote on postponing to the first meeting in June. That passes 10 0. All right. Okay. Next. Next, we move to ordinances for final passage. Ordinance number 5678, authorized parish administrator, designee to lease certain residential property at Fort Wade. So moved for Second. adoption. Uh, moved yeah. by the chair, second by Commissioner Lyndon Johnson. Right. Uh, please. <coughs> Thank you, administration, for providing that supplemental information. That passes 11 0 with one out. There should be a lease. Yes, case. appreciate it. Thank you. Ordinance number 5691 amending the budget for investment revenues and expenditures for the solid waste disposal fund. Move to approve. Second, moved by Commissioner Lynn, second by the chair. Is there any questions? Please Thank vote. you very much for taking it on a solid way. <laughs> <laughs> Passes 11 0. Right, next, we move to ordinance number 5693. Declare certain adjudicated properties to be surplus and authorize the administrator to approve. Second. second, moved by Commissioner Lynn, second by Commissioner Bowman. Is there any question? Please vote. Eleven zero. Ordinance number 694, 2017, <coughs> closing the band certain alley and portion of the street dedication. So moved. Second. second. Moved by Commissioner Chavez, second by Commissioner Milton. Are there any questions on the event? Atkins. Was that Atkins? Yes, sir. <coughs> Commissioner Atkins, they need you when they go play that bean bag. Mr. Atkins. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. A bean bag champion. Glad mm -hmm. passed 11 0. Next, we move to zoning ordinance for introduction by title. Oh. Zoning case P1017 oh, no. huh? in regards to ordinance number 5695 of 2017, <laughs> amending the zoning of property located on the north side of Elby Road, 500 w feet west of Golf Ridge Drive, Cattle Parish, Louisiana. Next, we move to ordinances for introduction by title. Ordinance number 5696 to set the general purpose millages and special purpose millages purpose millages and instruct the tax assessor to include said millage on the tax roll for the year 2017. <coughs> Ordinance number 5697, setting the parish millage for the purpose of paying principal and interest due in 2017 at an, out, at an outstanding parish bond issue and to instruct the assessor to include said millage on tax roll for 2017. Ordinance number 5698, to adopt the value fixed or to be fixed by the Louisiana Tax Commission on all assessments for railways and other public service corporations and instruct the assessor to extend such assessments and values on the tax roll of the parish of cattle for 2017. Ordinance number 5699, an ordinance setting the assessment of property classified as timberlands and instruct the assessor to include the set assessment of the tax roll of the parish of cattle for year 2017. Ordinance number 5700, declaring certain adjudicated properties to be surplus and authorize the parish administrator designee to sell the parish tax interest in certain surplus adjudicated properties. 
Next, we need to approve the work to section. Uh, second. Uh, moved by Commissioner Lynn, second by Commissioner Cawthorn. Uh, please vote on ratifying the work session. <clears throat> Is 11 one hour. Next, we move to resolutions. Resolution 45 providing for the candidates of return to declaring the results of a special election held in Cattle Parish on Saturday, April 29th. Second move. Move by Second. Commissioner. Wait a minute. There's some people in the queue here. Are y'all in to speak? Or that? Yeah. But you got to get the motion first. Okay, move by Commissioner Atkins. Second by Commissioner. Was that both? Did you second that? No, Middleton. No, to ratify. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'd say. Yeah. Okay. Moved by <laughs> Commissioner Atkins, second by Commissioner Bowman to ratify those minutes. Did y'all want to speak on your motion? I'm good. Did you want to speak on your second? No, sir. Okay. Uh, Enough to, I'll probably be the first one. So, Commissioner oh. Linda Johnson, go ahead. All right, I want to make a motion to end global and, and adopt okay. resolution 45, 46, 47, uh, 49, 50. 51 and 52. So Second. Moved by Commissioner Johnson. Substitute motion by Commissioner Johnson to go over and adopt all of those. Uh, second by Commissioner Milton. Uh, I see Commissioner oh, Gage right. Watts. I was in the queue first. Okay. Go ahead. I was in the queue for the same thing. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Chavez. Johnson, go ahead. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, please vote. Is there any questions on any of these? On all right, please vote. Oh, uh, if we could hold off, is that the last thing on the agenda? Yep. Yes, mm -hmm. sir, because we have no old business. We'll hold off before we adjourn. I want to make some quick, um, uh, just a personal privilege here. I see that there's a story on KTBS that's supposed to run at 6 o'clock, and I want to clear the air um, before it comes on uh, and get put out. But there's some accusation that I have. Uh, made a comment to uh, vote out a member of the Cattle Parish School Board that's based on race. And I want to be clear that I don't play the race game. Uh, it seems like that's a popular topic to uh, try to send people off. Um, and I don't play that game. Um, I have reached out to the CBS <coughs> general manager and the newsroom director, and I find it interesting that this particular issue came up yeah. just as we uh, met with them a week ago to call them out on some uh, stories that we felt were not uh, were not two-sided and didn't, they didn't reach out for our opinion. And so to insinuate that I'm asking for us to oust someone from a school board seat based on race <coughs> uh, is simply not true. And that's what I'm talking about. And that's what we talk about when we talk about. Mission. Right, well that's what we talk about when we talk about misinformation being put out misconceptions being put out. Um, every day, folks are recruited to run for public office. And how is it that this particular issue becomes an issue of race? Uh, it's a matter of fact. If you go over to the register of office that the demographics in that area has changed. Uh, and so I'm not sure how they're picking up that it's about race or my comments are racially motivated. So I just want to convey to the members on this body up front and in person, and I know that Mr. May reached out to you, and I don't know <coughs> if anybody reached out back to him, but I want to convey in public that I do not play the race game. Uh, and I'm not going to allow anybody to drag me uh, into a position of playing the race card. That's not what I do, that's not how I operate. Uh, I work with individuals of all ethnic background, whether it's religion, gender, uh, socioeconomics. And so uh, I see right. everybody as, uh, one person. That's right. We're all children of God in my eyes. And so I do not, I don't believe in that. And I'm disappointed that they would stoop so low into going and spending something that was just uh, a saying on my Facebook page. And if you followed me since, uh, I've been on Facebook uh, when you needed a college account. That's the only way you could get on Facebook was right. with a college email account. I mean, that's, that's really how Facebook started. You had to have a college email address to get on. And that's I've true. been on since then, and I have always 
uh, raised issues. I've always been vocal on there, but I've always done it in a manner that's respectful to the public and respectful to the people who follow me. So. Uh, I'm disappointed that that's happening, and uh, just want to get out there and put that on the record. So that's my two things. Right. Commissioner Lyndon Johnson, are you in the queue? No. Okay. Is there anything else? There's no need to adjourn. Second. Moved by Commissioner Gage Watt, second by Commissioner Lewis Johnson. Good morning, Mr. Johnson. I'm sorry about this. Uh, right. That's a uh, right. oh, big one. Donald. Donald. Yeah. Hey.